Hey family, Pastor J, Dr. J, whatever you call me, it's keeping it real. We have another session. Today is entitled, My Cup. Every one of us has a cup that we don't want to drink. Today we're going to be talking about a man, the son of God, named Jesus. And he had a cup that he did not want to drink. We all have some things in life that we don't have to deal, we don't want to deal with. I don't know about you, but I have some struggles that I don't want to deal with. I have some consequences that I don't want to deal with. But every single one of us has a cup that we don't want to drink. In this session, you're going to see Jesus deal with loneliness, abandonment, neglect, and feel as if nobody's with them. I don't know about you, but have you ever been in a space where you felt like you've been abandoned, that somebody had let you down? Jesus felt the same way you felt. So today, I want to do a short teaching from Mark chapter 14. This is the Garden of Gethsemane. This is where Jesus felt like he was abandoned, alone and by himself. Verse 31 reads, but Peter kept saying to him insistently, if you die, I will ride with you. <laughs> Have you had someone in your life that say that they are a ride or die? Have you had somebody in your life that say they'll never leave you nor forsake you? Have you had somebody in your life who you thought had your back and when you look back, they weren't there? Have you had somebody blame you and they were with you? Wow, Jesus is listening to Simon Peter tell him, man, I got your back. I'll be with you through thick and thin. And Jesus already knows that Simon Peter is going to deny him and say, I never knew him. I don't know about you, but have you ever had a situation where you thought these people, you are your friends, friends, how many of us have them, friends, ones we can depend on, friends that you thought had your back, that you thought would ride with you. Jesus knows that Simon Peter is going to deny him. It reads this, verse 32. Then they went to a place called Gethsemane, the crushing place. Jesus said to his disciples, sit down here until I have prayed. He took Peter, James, and John, and he began to be deeply distressed and troubled, extremely anguished at what was about to come. And he said to them, my soul is deeply grieved. I'm overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. Can you stay with me and pray with me? After going a little further, he fell down on the ground, distressed by the weight of the spiritual burden and began to pray. If there's, if there's any way possible, Lord, please take this cup away from me. I don't know who I'm talking to, but have you ever been to the place where you're asking God, please, God, get me out of this jam. Lord, please get me out of this situation. Lord, this is too much for me to bear. I feel isolated. I feel alone. I feel abandoned. Everyone who said they had my back, they've all left me. I don't know about you, but there's been seasons in my life where I ask God why. Why am I here? Why so long? And Jesus, the son of God, is asking the question, Lord, if it be your will, let this cup pass me by. I don't know what cup you bear today, but I realize this. There's some cups in life that we got to drink. There's some seasons in life that we just have to go through. As Psalms 23 and 4 says, yea, though we go through the valley of the shadow of death, we will fear no evil. Understand that you can get through. Understand that this too shall pass. Wow, wow. Verse 36, he was saying, Abba, Father, all things are possible to you. Take this cup of judgment away from me, but not my will, but your will. Wow. I don't know if you had a situation where you had to take one for the team. <laughs> when I played football, uh, there's a particular play called the kickoff, right? And during the kickoff, there are some people who run down and their whole goal is to bust the wedge. The wedge is a group of people who are put together to block. And they will have a person, his whole goal is to run down and bust the wedge. It's a suicide mission. Now he don't die, but boy, he get hurt. Glory to God. In this season, Jesus has to go bust the gap. Jesus has to go make a way for us. A sinless son who has to lay it down for us. 
Wow. How lonely must it have been for him to think that I'm going to die for the sins of the world. And I've asked these three guys to pray with me and they can't do it. I asked these guys to ride with me and they can't do it. Think of it this way, y'all. There was 12 disciples, but only three came with them. <laughs> it's amazing when you go through trying times, the number of people in your circle gets smaller and smaller. See, when things are good, everybody wants to ride. Everyone wants to be with you. But when things are bad, you can count them on one hand how many people will be with you during thick and thin. Wow. Verse 37. And he came back and found them sleeping. Wow. <laughs> they sleeping on them, y'all. He said, can you help me? They sleeping on him. And he said, Peter, Simon, are you asleep? We were unable to keep watch with you for one hour. They couldn't hang with him for one hour. Keep actively watching, praying so that you do not come into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. The Bible says that a brother is born for adversity. You don't know who your friend is or your brother is until you're in adversity. See, oftentimes we think our family will ride with us. But you realize when tragedy, trial or tribulation hits your life, you will realize who your friends are. All you have to do is when bad things happen, look who puts their hand out to help you. See, you'll find out who your friend is. See, adversity will identify who your friends are. In the midst of your fire, you will see who your friends are. Oh, there's a three Hebrew boys. They were in the fire. And guess what? They saw a fourth person in the fire. It was Jesus. Whoever's in the fire with you is your friend. And you will realize oftentimes there's not too many people who will be in the fire with you. The Bible says that Jesus came back and they were sleeping. Here are four things I want you to do to help you resist this temptation. Keep watch, stay awake, be vigilant. Number two, pray to God on how to maintain your vigilance. Three, support your friends and loved ones because you never know when you're going to need help. Four, focus on your purpose God has given you. You know what I do? I have learned that oftentimes my passion may supersede my purpose. When we make mistakes, it's because we're doing something passionately, but we're doing the wrong direction. Make sure whatever you do, it's the purpose that God has called you to. Matthew 6, says this, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. Seek God's plan for your life, and everything you need will be added. Oh, that's Matthew 6, That's Jomo ties. OK, I just broke it. Down. Seek what God wants you to do in the earth and everything you need will be supplied. Verse 39. He went away again and prayed, saying again. Lord, if it be your will. When Jesus came back again, he found his friends were sleeping on him. My God, how lonely must have Jesus felt. I have walked with the disciples. I have fed them. I have led them. I've prayed for them. And now when I need them, they're sleeping on me. I don't know about you, my friends, but I've been slept on. I don't know if you've been slept on. Will you feel isolated? You feel alone and you feel abandoned. The blessing of it all is God said this. I'll never leave you nor forsake you. God said, I'm an ever-present help in a time of trouble. In Matthew 28 and 20, he says, I will be with you always until the end of time. I was a young boy and I'd always wonder where my daddy was. And I'd ask, ask my mama, where's my daddy? Where's my daddy? Where's my daddy? My father was not a part of my life for a long time. He came in at the back end, but at that point, it was too late. And oftentimes we, we feel that we are in seasons where we have no role model or model. We have no male figure who pours in our life. And then we make bad choices because we have bad models. And we find, our place, find ourselves in a place where we're isolated and alone. Understand this. 
Jesus can meet you right where you are. He's a friend that's to get closer than a brother. Believers, friends, understand this. Whatever you're going through, this too shall pass. Galatians chapter 6 says this. Do not get weary in well-doing. For in due season, you'll reap what you've sown if you faint not. Verse 40, as I close. And again, he came back and found them sleeping <clears throat> because their eyes were very heavy and they did not know how to answer him. He came back a third time saying, are you still sleeping and resting? Enough of that. The hour has come. Look, the son of man is being betrayed into the hand of sinners. Get up. Let's go. The betrayer is there. Isn't it amazing that Jesus, our savior, was betrayed? Let me help you. If Jesus was betrayed, <laughs> you're going to be betrayed. If they lied on him, they're going to lie on you. If they cheated on him, they're going to cheat on you. And when Jesus was on the cross, he said this, Lord, forgive them, for they know not what they do. There are going to be seasons in your life where you feel alone, abandoned, persecuted, wronged. But I want you to understand, just like Joseph did in the Bible, he kept a great attitude and a great spirit. And it wasn't long that he was out and he was promoted. Listen, if you want something different, you got to do something different. Change begins with you. Today, start a new you. Second Corinthians 517 says this. Anyone who's in Christ Jesus is a new creature. Old things passed away. Behold, all things are new. This is your brother, Pastor J, Dr. J, or just Shoma, whatever you want to call me. Saying God bless you and I love you. And understand this, Isaiah 54, 17, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. What the enemy made for bad, God can turn around for your good. I love you to life. God bless you.